So guys how are you what if Naruto was a pervy trainer and had slept with Seraphal in high school DxD movie? Naruto, Sasuke and Kagaya were battling in one of Kaguya's dimension while Sakura, Kakashi and Obito just watched them battle because of how injured they were or how useless they were. Cough cough Sakura cough. Kagaya is deciding to finish them off in one move, so she used all killing Ashbone rapidly in 360 but missed Naruto and Sasuke. Unfortunately, the attack stopped the three from watching and slowly their bodies turned into ashes. Sakura, Kakashi, Obito, Naruto yelled while flying in shock to his teammates but couldn't pass by. Kagaya starts to attack him by throwing one of her all killing Ashbone, which he dodged once again. Looking at his teammates turn into ash, he turned back to Kagaya with hate and anger as he yelled out in grief. I'm going to kill you. Sasuke, let's go together. Sasuke was in a shock because he never saw Naruto this angry, but he quickly snapped out of it by Naruto's shouting. Thus, the battle between Kagaya, Naruto, and Sasuke began. After a good 40 minutes in the battle, Kagaya injured Sasuke intensely that he was about to die. Sasuke had decided to give his six paths of sage power to Naruto so he can defeat Kagaya. Sasuke then told Naruto. Naruto takes my six paths of sage power, I, can't go on, anymore. No Sasuke there must be another way, Naruto said to Sasuke while trying to heal him with his chakra. Kurama can you lend me some of your chakra so I can heal him, said Naruto in his mindscape. In his mindscape, you could see a kitsune with nine long tails, the kitsune has red orange fur with black fur around its eyes that stretches to its rabbits like ears. The kitsune has red irises with black slits for pupils and his upper body structure of a human with opposable thumbs with razor sharp claws. Naruto even with my chakra you can't heal him so I suggest that we use the other half of old man sage power and deal with Kagaya and end her, said Kurama to Naruto's mindscape. Naruto decides to take the other half of six pads of sage from Sasuke he bends down to Sasuke's level and absorbs his power with Kyuubi's help for himself, while a black moon appeared in the middle of his left palm, after finishing taking Sasuke's power he sadly whispered to him while slightly sobbing. Sayonara my one and only friend yeah, sayonara, my one and, only friend Sasuke struggling to say it before he died with a smile on his face. Kurama, get your ass ready, Naruto said in his mindscape trying not to sob. Hi hi, said Kurama in a deep tone whilst giving Naruto his chakra. Then all of a sudden with his six path mode activated his left eye turned to a Rinnegan and dashed so fast that even Kagaya was surprised, using chakra his hand had a massive Rasengan and smashed it to Kaguya's stomach which sent her flying away with her stomach bleeding. When Kagaya finally stopped flying, knowing that at her current conditions she couldn't kill Naruto. So she used her power to teleport Naruto into a different dimension that even Naruto himself using Rinnegan he still wouldn't be able to come back to the elemental nations, letting her guard down that she put Naruto in a dimension that he wouldn't come back from, but she didn't think that he would use the Rinnegan to pull her towards himself as they disappear, this was the last time that the elemental nation will ever see Naruto and Kagaya. The dimensional gap in the dimensional gap, you could see two creature in there, one was Great Red, a massive red western dragon with a massive horn on his snout and has two sets of wings, being as big as Kurama, next to the dragon was Ophus a shapeshifting dragon as a cute young girl wearing gothic lolita fashion at the height of 137 centimeters with long black hair down to her hips when suddenly she asks the dragon in an emotionless tone. Baka red why are you at my home? But great red replied with a casual deep tone. I'm here so I could do my flying tricks since there's no other being than you who can match my strength, but you're so boring so shoo shoo Ophus. Ophus was about to attack Great Red when suddenly they saw two beings appear out of nowhere with the same power level that equals their own, looking at the two people they saw a man around 18 to 19 with blonde spiky hair, blue colored right eye but his left eye was purple with black ripple pattern and six tomos in a shape of an upside down triangle, his body was emitting a powerful yellow like power. While the other person was a woman with extremely long gray hair with pale skin, she had three eyes. Her normal two eyes were clear white while her third eye on her forehead has red sclera and eye rides with a black ripple pattern spreading over. Looking at those two you can say that Great Red was surprised, it has been so long since someone had the same strength as him, so Great Red quickly tried to ask them if they could fight one of them but before he could the blonde boy dashed to the paled woman using both his hand to touch her so fast that Great Red had no reaction, Ophus and the paled woman couldn't even react, the blonde boy shouted. Six paths planetary devastation after the blonde woman said that, the ground in the dimensional gap started to break apart into debris and covered the paled woman all around her whole body making a shape of a sphere, the paled woman knowing what will happen, we shouted out. Why why, before the debris covered her into a ball, 
the debris continued to cover her till it was the size of the moon as if it has floating upon high in the dimensional gap like a moon. After sealing her the blonde deactivated his six path powers and turned to Great Red and Ophis and told them. Yo I'm Uzumaki Naruto and please don't destroy the moon because she is really hard to seal and she will kill everybody and I'll rather not want to fight her again. He said in a sad and tired tone before a crack suddenly appeared underneath him in the dimensional gap and throwing him up 30,000 feet tall above the underworld. Still inside the dimensional gap holy shit, he just made a moon in the dimensional gap and his power level was as high as mine. Great Red shouted out in shock, Naruto Uzumaki, Ophis thought but then turned to Great Red. Baka Red leave my hoo boom she tried to ask Great Red to leave but before she could finish her sentence Great Red started to do his flying tricks leaving behind a slightly pissed Ophis. Meanwhile with Naruto Kurama can you help me right now? As he asks the Kyubi in his mind but Kurama replied. No can do Naruto, I've used up all of my chakra so use your remaining chakra and brace for impact. Well shit. Naruto thought as he used any chakra he can muster and cover himself for impact with chakra until he lost consciousness as he crashes to the ground. Moments before outside the sea tree mansion Seraphal Leviathan formerly Seraphal sea tree was a beautiful girl, looking in her late teens with black twin tails hair and blue eyes, her eyes were pink in season 2 to 3 but I think that having the same eyes as Naruto could be cute. She has a childlike body with large breast and the height of 160 centimeters. Right now she was wearing her formal outfit instead of her magical girl outfit. Seraphal is one of the new Satans in the underworld after her. Ajuka, Sirzex and Falbium defeated the old Satan faction she was named the new Leviathan. Ajuka as Beelzebub, Sirzex as Lucifer and Falbium as Asmodeus. Anyway, right now she was going to visit her parents until she saw something like a meteorite flying down towards her family mansion, she was afraid that her family was going to be attacked. So she quickly flew to her house as what she has seen and assumed that it is a meteorite coming to crash her house. As soon as she flew to her house, she was glad that it didn't crash the mansion and decided to look at the meteorite, smoke was coming out of the backyard so she couldn't see what exactly crashed, as her parents who are Lord Seatree and Lady Seatree came with some of the maids to come out to see what exactly happened, Seraphal and the others were shocked to see a blonde man looking at the same age as Seraphal at the crash site unconscious. Seraphal quickly ran next to him and bent down to see if he was still alive. When she was going to see if he were alive they were shocked to see that he was alive despite how injured he was. Seriously he had bones coming out from some of his body parts and was quickly losing blood, thinking that the usual medics can't heal him she decided to use one of her piece from her peerage set that she got from Ajuka who said it could change people into half devils even if they were heavily injured or just died depending what piece you use or how many you use, she tried to use one of her mutated pawns but it didn't work, so she tried all of her 8 mutated pawns but it still didn't work. Shit. Why won't it work? Was he really powerful? She said out loud. So she used her queen piece on him. After using it, she felt a relief that he was slowing getting back into perfect health. After he was healed, she asked the maids to carry him to her room so he can rest until he has recovered. Four days later, in Seraphal bedroom, Naruto woke up in his mindscape and was thinking about his friend and those who died in the elemental nation. Deciding to not let the past haunt him and wanting to bury them later, he stood up and yelled out, Kurama, where the fuck are you? It was silent for a few seconds so he decided to try again. Kurama where the fuck, but before he could finish he was interrupted by Kurama as he yelled out. Shut the fuck up Gaki I can hear you loud and clear. Naruto seeing that, that Kurama is okay and still alive started running to Kurama and hugged his front right human like leg with snot dripping out of his nose while choking on his saliva said. Kurama, HRK, I'm so happy to, HRK, see you. Kurama was feeling cringy about it and grabbed Naruto with his left paw and chucked him out in the air. Get the fuck off me, your snot is fucking on my fur you gaki. He yelled but continues to say something different. Hey Naruto you feel any different about your chakra system? Yeah it feels kinda you know dark for some reason, do you know what it is? Naruto replied, yeah, it quite a long story so listen up cuz I won't be repeating myself you here, okay, so it started when you defeated Kagaya and. 30 minutes later so in short, you're telling me that my chakra system feels dark because I had been reincarnated as a devil that has something to do with a peerage by this girl so called Seraphal Leviathan in a place called the underworld and I'm not in the elemental nation? Naruto asks Kurama if he was missing out any major facts. Yes, and we can't go back to the elemental nation because Kagaya sent us to a place where even using Rinnegan we wouldn't be able to go back because we're not in the same universe anymore. The Rinnegan can let you go to a different dimension but it won't be able to let you go to a different universe. Kurama said in a serious tone while Naruto can only nod and accept his fate. Now wake the fuck up, in the real world, 
there is someone waiting for you. Kurama said as he kicked out Naruto from his mindscape. That shit face just fucking kicked me out. Naruto thought as he sits up on the bed wearing his pants but not his shirt, when he turned to his left side he saw a magnificent black haired twin tail beauty looking down at him with an excited expression on her face. Damn she's even hotter than Sakura and her breast is so much bigger than Sakura as well. I mean she could kill pervy sage just by having him looking at her. He thought with his face tinted red, Seraphal noticed Naruto blush and so asked. Is there something on my face? While Naruto was listening he noticed that he knew that she got the wrong idea, so he told her. No no there's nothing on your face it's just that, um, I was amazed at how cute you looked. When Seraphal heard that it made her blush, so she quickly tried to change the subject by asking him. A hey, anyway I hope you're okay from the injury because you were terribly injured when you had crashed. Seraphal asks Naruto in a tone that sound caring. Yeah I'm fine, thank you. My name is Uzumaki Naruto but anyway you must be Seraphal Leviathan right? Naruto asked her to make sure that he won't end up thanking the wrong person who saved his life. Yes yes that's my name, but how do you know my name Naruto? She asks in a childlike and curious voice, ah, that would be the Kayubi named Kurama sealed in my stomach. Naruto replied with a grin, Kayubi you said, and you said that he's sealed in your stomach right? She asked while pointing at the seal on Naruto's stomach. Yes. Kurama and I are partners, Naruto replied while punching the air with his right fist. So anyway what were you doing before you lost consciousness? Seraphal questioned Naruto wanting to know what happened. Well you see, I was fighting a goddess in my world until she teleported herself and I to this void. Looking place, and then I sealed her. After I had sealed her I saw a giant red dragon and then a little girl with black hair told them to not break it, so after that, there was a crack underneath me and it had teleported me pretty high in the air. I didn't have that much chakra so I used the rest of the chakra that I could use and protect myself with to brace impact. Said Naruto slightly embarrassed about it while having his right hand behind his head. Seraphal couldn't believe it, this young man in front of her was fighting a goddess in the dimensional gap and sealed her, he also talked to Great Red and Ophis on top of that, so she nods her head to indicate that she now knew what had happened to him. So anyway I'll like to thank you for saving my life but I need to confirm something about this peerage thing that Kurama had told me. Naruto replied to the nod, ah that right, I still haven't told you about how our evil peace system works, so basically the evil peace system is like a chess set, the person that has the chess set can use the chess pieces to turn people into reincarnated devils and enslave them to the owner of the evil chess set, for example, I used my queen piece that could even reincarnate beings like gods and dragons onto you. I see, so that means I belong to you from now on as a slave? Naruto asks using his negative emotion sensing techniques to see if Seraphal has any bad intent at him. New Naruto. Stop being mean to me, I don't want you to be my slave either, I would rather want you to be my friend, or maybe more than just friends. She said but muttered the last part with embarrassment. I'm sorry but what did you say at the end? Naruto asks in a confused tone. NN nothing Seraphal stuttered with a huge blush on her face. After a while, Seraphal regained her posture and said to Naruto in a playful mood. EHM, please take care of me from now on, Naru-chan. Likewise so please take care of me as well Sarah Chan, said Naruto while looking at Seraphal with a bright smile. 200 years had passed since Naruto and Seraphal have met each other. While 200 years had passed by in a breeze, Seraphal confessed to Naruto. Naruto then accepted Seraphal confession, thus they started a relationship together and had gotten married later on their relationship. When Seraphal's parent heard about this they were on their knees sobbing while talking about how they will finally be grandparents now and could finally have a grandchild soon. Naruto has been recognized as, the strongest devil, in the world, also another name for Naruto is, the most unpredictable devil, in the world, but the most popular name known for him is, Kayubi Sage Devil. The cause of this name is his ability to use his chakra, Senjutsu, and is able to go into biju mode that looks like a Kayubi, thus everybody named Naruto, Kayubi Sage Devil. Winding up to be an ultimate devil, Naruto had finally received his evil piece from Ajuka and gained three peerage members so far. One of his peerage members is a 28 aged man named Escanor and he is Naruto's only rook, wielding on his right hand is the one handed sacred gear Rita. Rita is a giant axe with a blade like shaped a crescent moon for its appearance. Rita is also featured with two golden protrusion, one is bigger than the other. Rita also has two spears attached to it. The longer side is in the middle on top of the axe, while the shorter side is on the opposite side of the blade facing outward. Escanor ability is called Sunshine that had previously belonged to a high ranking angel. 
The Angel had died during the Great War between the three factions but somehow Sunshine had ended up with Escanor when he was born. Now Escanor ability is unlike any others, when it is midnight he is at his weakest making him look like a skinny human who had never eaten a thing. But when the time hits noon his power is at his most capable strength out of all, for the time being. Instead of him being skinny his whole body went from skinny to muscular when you think there will be at least a little bit of fat from the growth there was absolutely none on Escanor's body at all. So when sunrise comes up his strength will increase which will make his body become larger and makes his personality change. From his submissive night self to his arrogant and prideful daytime self. But when the sun lowering down his power will decrease and his body will shrink back into his skinny self which will then change his personality back to his night form. Sunshine allows Escanor to create a miniature sun with his magic power, Escanor has short blonde hair with blue eyes, he usually wears very stretchy clothes which is a white singlet and very loose black pants with black boots, which makes his outfit for his daylight form, when night comes he still wears a similar look with his daylight form. One other member of Naruto's peerage is Tatsumi, Tatsumi is Naruto's only pawn. This Tatsumi is a young man with an average height. His eyes are green and the length, width is normal. He also has brown hair well let's say this he is an average Japanese male. Tatsumi wears a white assassin jacket over a slim purple hoodie and a black shirt underneath. Adding on for the bottom base of his body is black pants with black boots. To end his appearance is his sacred gear on the back of the whole outfit Incursio. Incursio is a short sword with a chain link at the hilt. This weapon was forged by using the flesh of a dragon called Tyrant. In the past Tyrant was a dragon that could even stand against the two heavenly dragons. Diedrich and Albion, Tyrant was sealed into a sacred gear by the gods from the Bible during the Great War with Diedrich and Albion, Incursio has the same ability as Tyrant, adaptation and evolution, the user of Incursio will continue to evolve like it's being immune to poison, which could cause having a cold plus heat resistance and invisibility, but when the balance breaker activates the short sword will change into armor for the user to wear just like the boosted gear and divine dividing. The last member of Naruto's peerage is Akame. Akame was Tatsumi's companion back in the days with long black hair and red eyes. She wears a dark sleeveless mini dress with white collar and red tie. She has long black socks and black shoes. Her scared gear is called Murasama. Murasama is a cursed Japanese katana that can kill a person in one cut. Once the blade pierces the skin, a poisonous curse will spread around the body and kill whoever is the victim in seconds. Sea Tree Mansion. While in the bedroom of the Sea Tree Mansion, there are two naked beings sleeping in the bed at the time. The first person is Naruto, this being is a young handsome man looking at the age around 25 with three whiskers mark on each side of his face. He has a medium length spiky blonde hair with blue eyes like the sky and a body with decent sized muscles, the person next to Naruto is called Seraphal, she is a beautiful woman with big breast and looks to be at the age around 25 as well. She has long black luscious hair that is currently untied at the moment adding to her appearance is her eye which is blue like the ocean eyes. The first one to wake up was Seraphal, lying on the bed she turned her body toward Naruto and hugged him like a body pillow having her breast touching Naruto's chest and whispered in a sweet voice. Naruto wake up, there was no reply from Naruto, she noticed that Naruto was sound asleep so she makes another attempt. Naruto wake up, she said again in a sweet voice but this time it sounded too sweet. Even though it was her second try Naruto was still sound asleep, she then tried another tactic so she stood up and got above his abs placing her foot on the different side of his body. Seraphal then gets in a position for jumping and so jumped and tucked her leg to her chest and landed on Naruto's abs. When Seraphal landed on Naruto, Naruto instantly woke up in shock that it made him spit out some of his saliva as well, when he saw Seraphal sitting on his abs with a very childlike smile, he was confused so he asked Seraphal. Sarah Chan why did you jump on me? It hurts, Naruto exhaustedly says to Seraphal. That's because you didn't wake up when I said something to you, I'm also 110% sure that I am pregnant from yesterday night as well? How are you so sure Sarah Chan? Naruto asks Seraphal. I mean you totally didn't come in me like 20 times or something, so I'm pretty sure that I'm pregnant now. Seraphal looked away from Naruto with embarrassment, Naruto also looked embarrassed from what Seraphal said and made him blush answering Seraphal. I guess I did come in you like 20 times when I think about it but who cares because I lost count after 5 or 6 times, Naruto said while thinking back of what happened the whole night yesterday. Flashback yesterday night Naruto and Seraphal were both sleeping together in their pajamas in the bedroom when suddenly Seraphal asked. Naru Chan we have been in a relationship for more than about a 100 years now, so I think that it is the time you know um, Seraphal said while blushing, but she couldn't continue on with her sentence. I know what Sarah Chan, 
Naruto asked while being the quiet and dense person he was. NN no it's nothing let's go back to sleep and have some rest Naruchan, Seraphal shyly say with a forced smile on her face, and a hint of tears underneath her eyes. You idiotic shit face Naruto. She obviously wants the DU shithead, so go bang her up and make children with her, Kurama yelled out with an annoyed expression in Naruto's mindscape. Oh shush shush shut the fuck up you oversized rabbit, Naruto replied while having a voice crack while blushing making his face overly red. Nani the fuck did you just called me, uh, I don't even care anymore, I'm going back to sleep now, Kurama replied while dozing off to sleep. Naruto thought back to what Kurama said about how Seraphal might want to carry his child, he kept on thinking about the fact that Seraphal might have wanted a child, so before he also dozed back to sleep, Naruto had a serious face on his face and asked Seraphal. Sarah-chan tell me honestly, do you want to bear my child in the future? Seraphal suddenly turned her head around facing somewhere else and nodded that she wanted a child. May I ask why Sarah-chan? Naruto asks her wanting to know why she suddenly wants to have kids. It because I think that we are at the point where we can bear kids now, and also because I can't stand the thought about so tan being lonely when I'm busy doing my work so I thought that if she has a nephew then she won't be lonely. Seraphal cried out worrying about her sister. Naruto can only, sigh at Seraphal's sister Siskon personality and hugged her, he whispered to her ears seductively saying. If you wish to bear babies, then let make start right now Sarah Chan. When she heard this she was beyond happiness and took off her clothes while Naruto did the same, they got in position or started to do their business. After 30 minutes outside of their room Lord and Lady Sitri were walking past the hall when they heard some familiar sounds, they found out that the sounds were coming out from Naruto and Seraphal room. They knew that Naruto and Seraphal were attempting to have a child so they started to cry comically on their knees on the floor while saying at the same time. It about time that I'm finally going to grandfather, grandmother. End of flashback after Naruto finished thinking about what happened yesterday night he checks the time to see that it was nearly noon, so he grabbed Seraphal between his arms and quickly kissed her on her mouth and said. We should wake up now Sarah-chan, it's almost noon and we have to tell your parents about you being pregnant. Okie dokie. Seraphal said in her usual playful mood, she got up to change while Naruto did the same. Once they had both finished changing Seraphal started wearing her usual magical girl outfit, while Naruto, on the other hand, was wearing his orange colored jacket with three black stripes going down on both of its sleeves with black pants and black boots. Yosh! Let go tell your parents about the good news, Naruto said in excitement. Hi, let's go! Seraphal replied with the same amount of excitement as Naruto while Seraphal went out and opened the door with Naruto to find her parents. Time skip seven years later sitting on the sofa there was a boy currently watching a magical girl show on television in the lounge. This boy had blonde hair with black highlights on the tip of the hair adding on his face with clear blue eyes, the boy also had two whiskers mark on both sides of his face, for clothing, he was wearing a blue jacket, black short and small leather shoes that a noble would usually wear, this boy was called Boruto Uzumaki Sitri son of Naruto Uzumaki and Seraphal Leviathan. Boruto had inherited the ability to use his chakra from his father and water, ice-based magic from his mother. While lying down on the couch there was another being, beast next to Boruto. This being was called Kuroka Naruto's bishop, Kuroka is a Nekosho a variant type of Nekomata with large breast. She has black long hair with black cat ears and little bangs. She also has gorgeous golden eyes with cat-like pupils, to be fair. Her eyes looks like a cat, editor, she casually wears a black kimono with yellow obi. Including a set of golden beads behind her waist with a one pair of high level jandals, her kimono features a red interior and it opens at her shoulders which makes a view to her breasts, but if you're wondering how Kuroka is in Naruto's peerage, it's because the meaning behind it was after she had killed her previous king that was about to run an experiment using her little sister Sharon as a test subject. The devils formed a search party to kill Kuroka and all of her species. So she went and ran away from the devils that were trying to kill her, while she was running, Kuroka was hoping that her sister would be found by someone that won't mistreat her, she kept on running until she was cornered by the devils, the devils were about to slaughter her until that time Naruto showed up, he was busy killing the devils that were going to kill her, with Tatsumi and nighttime Eskinor behind him he was assured that they will win the battle. After Naruto had saved Kuroka he told her that her sister is safe with Rias Gremory. Rias Gremory goes by the name Kaneko and has the fear of using her true power along with her older sister, at first, Kuroka was depressed until Naruto had offered her protection and will teach her Senjutsu if she would like to join his peerage as his bishop, in which she had offered to agree to join. And that is the story of how Kuroka joined Naruto and his team. Boruto hurry up quickly, your father had asked me to tell you that you must go somewhere with him and your mother soon Naya. 
Kuroka told him while she was lying down on the couch that was next to him. Okay Kuroka-chan, Boruto mumbled to Kuroka as he gets the remote and turns off the TV to go find his parents. Boruto was roaming around attempting to find his parent until he suddenly stops to found them kissing passionately at the front of the door, he started to walk to them and ask them with a weird voice while feeling extremely uncomfortable. Father, mother are we going out right away, and do you always have to kiss passionately every day? When Boruto gained Naruto's attention both Naruto and Seraphal broke their kiss and answered back his question saying. Ha ha. Once you have grown older and find the girl that you are willing to love, you would be doing the same thing as what I and your mother had just done, while patting Boruto's head. Well anyway let's go out now, Seraphal said once she had said that the family started to walk out the door. By the way mother where are we going? Boruto asks in curiosity. We are going to the Fenix mansion because they wanted to talk to me and your father about something and asked us to bring you with this botan. Seraphal replied with a sweet smile on her face. Okay, then mother, Boruto replied back in a smile, smiley face. Later in the Fenix mansion currently, Naruto, Seraphal and Boruto are sitting on the couch, on the opposite end of the couch was Lord Fenix, Lady Fenix and Ravel Fenix, a part of the Fenix family were currently in the room the three of the family member had blonde hair and was wearing noble clothing. I hope that you know why you are here today right now Naruto-sama and Leviathan-sama, Lord Fenix said in a deep, serious voice. Yeah, I know why and how many times have I said to not call me with Sama Lord Fenix, Naruto said in an annoyed voice with his eyes twitching. My apologies Naruto, said Lord Fenix, thank you, Naruto replied. We should start talking now don't you think so, ah yes, Ravel chan why don't you go outside and play together with Boruto-kun. Hi Okazan, Ravel replied eh. Do I have to? Boruto said out loud while sighing to his mother. Yes, you do. Your father and I are talking about something important with the Fenix family right now, Bo Tan. Seraphal replied to Boruto's question. Boruto can only listen to his mum, so he grabbed Ravel's hand and pulled her with him outside. Hey, what are you doing? Let go of me! Ravel shouted out in embarrassment as she was pulled by Boruto outside. Ah, youth. Well, anyways, let's talk about the engagement between for our kids, Naruto said in a serious voice. Yes, Naruto, Lord Fenix replied with a serious face. With Boruto and Ravel currently, the two were outside while they were still outside Boruto was still pulling Ravel by the hand until. Stop pulling me, I am the daughter of the Fenix family so get your dirty hands off me, Ravel shouted out while blushing until her face turns red. Sorry sorry, oh yay, by the way, we still haven't really introduced ourselves yet right? Boruto asked playfully, Ravel just nodded. Well okay I'll start. My name is Boruto Uzumaki Citri and I am 7 years old but you can just call me Boruto or Boruto-kun, Boruto said with a huge smile. Well okay then, my name is Ravel Fenix and I am also 7 years old but you can just call me Ravel or Ravel Chan, Ravel said as politely as she can and then lowered her head for showing her courtesy. Well, Ravel Chan do you want to explore in the forest, Boruto asked as he pointed at the forest out far. I don't know Boruto-kun, Ravel said feeling unsure about going to the forest. Come on, it will be fun Ravel Chan, Boruto said trying to convince her to come with him. Okay then, let go to the forest and explore, Ravel replied giving up on trying to convince Boruto to not go to the forest. Meanwhile with Naruto seriously, how greedy are you guys? First, you have that arrogant son of yours who is engaged to the Grammary heiress, and now you want your daughter to be engaged with my son now, ha ha how nice of you, Naruto sarcastically laughed to Lord Fenix. Well we devils are greedy as it can be, you know? stated Lord Fenix. Yeah I know, even I was a bit greedy once but I will only accept the engagement if Boruto and Ravel love each other dearly, Naruto finished with a sigh. But suddenly there was a fallen angel presence that shouldn't be here they were close to Boruto and Ravel. Oi Naruto you feel that? Kurama said out loud in Naruto's mindscape. Yeah I felt that but don't worry, these fallen angels are at best a mid-rank. Okay, I'm going back to SLEZ's, Kurama started dozing before he finishes his own sentence. Hey, fucking lazy ass fox, Naruto said out loud in a WTF face and left his mindscape. Oi Naruto, why were you quiet all of a sudden Lord Fenix asked. Sorry, it's nothing, I just sense there are some fallen angels nearby where Boruto and Ravel are, Naruto said without even worrying. You mean there are fallen angels near our kin? Why are you so calm about it? Lord Fenix asks angrily at Naruto. Darling calm down, I'm sure that Naruto already has a plan to this. Lady Fenix said while trying to calm down her husband. Lord Fenix you should be more like your wife and calm down, and yes I do have a plan, 
Naruto said reassuring the two blondes. What is your plan then Naruto? Lord Fenix asked as he calms down, when Lord Fenix said that Naruto grinned and said out loud. Oh that's easy, everyone in the room got ready to listen to hear what Naruto's plan was and trying to think what he would say. My plan is, to go with the flow plan. Naruto finished with a satisfied look on his face thinking his plan is a masterpiece. Naruto. Seraphal shouted seriously, Lord and Lady Fenix and Naruto were surprised to hear that Seraphal raised her voice, but Naruto quickly calms her down by saying. Sorry sorry, Naruto then looked outside the window and said, Well Tatsumi is on vacation with Akame and it is daytime, so I guess I can call him to help them. With Boruto and Ravel see I told you it would be fun Ravel chan Boruto said happily with his hands behind his head while walking through the forest. I guess so, Ravel said while sighing, but suddenly three men came out of nowhere. Well well well, what do we have here? The first fallen angel said with an evil grin. It looks like two little devils in my eyes, the second fallen angel also said with an evil grin. Well aren't we lucky, we were selected by Kokabiel to scout the devils for any action and look at what we found, said the last fallen angel who seems to be the one who is in charge of the gang as he pulled up a fake smile. WHWH who are you guys? Ravel asked the three hesitantly. Yeah, who are you? Boruto shouted out to back up Ravel's question. Well little devils, we are what you call fallen angels, the boss of the three replied as two pairs of black feathered wings appeared out of nowhere behind his back followed by the other two with one pair of black feathered wings. Boruto recognizing what fallen angels are, he quickly grabbed Ravel's hand and dragged her as he tried to run away. Era era era, where do you think you're going little devil? The boss said as he and the other two chased them by flying. Knowing that Boruto can't run away from them he stopped and face against the three devils. Huh? What this, you're going to protect your girlfriend and fight all three of us, oh, how sweet of you but too bad you are going to die right now, the boss said with a smug face, Boruto had his hands in its shape and used cage bunshin no jutsu to create four shadow clones of himself. Boruto kun what are you doing? Ravel shouted in concern for what's Boruto going to do. I'm sorry Ravel Chan if I didn't tell you to go to the forest then this wouldn't happen so run away when you see a chance okay, Boruto said with a smile as he turned back to the fallen angels with a serious face and dashed to them with his clones trying to punch them, the fallen angels punched all the clones in Boruto and the clone dispel while Boruto was sent backwards in front of Ravel. Itai Itai, ha Ravel Chan what are you still doing here I told you to run away, Boruto exclaimed as he saw Ravel still here. But I can't just leave you here Boruto kun, Ravel shouted but Boruto countered back loudly. This is my fault that you got into this mess so run away Ravel chan, Ravel could only nod and run away with tears under her eyes, but one of the fallen angels tried to chase but was stopped by a sharp icicle made by Boruto as he struggles to stand up. Oi boss can we just kill him and then kill that little girl? The first fallen angel with one pair of wing asks and was followed by the second fallen angel. Yeah. Boss let just kill him and kill that little girl after. No, how about we kill the boy and rape the girl then kill her, how about that I, the boss declared. Wow, that's our boss for you, the first fallen angel exclaimed. I know right, the second fallen angel exclaimed while nodding his head. Boruto was angry at how the fallen angels were talking about Ravel and ignoring him so he shouted out. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu to create four more clones of himself and they all made an icicle from their hands and aim it at the fallen angels, but the fallen angels easily defected it and fly up to Boruto and punch and kick him for a good minute, after the beat down by the fallen angels, the boss of the fallen angels said. Well little devil, before we kill you, do you have any last words? As he prepared a light spear at Boruto's face. Well, at least I met a cute girl like Ravel Chan, Boruto said with a regretful sound while staring at the light spear. Ah, how sweet, the boss said sarcastically, but who cares, because you're going to die now, he said afterwards as he about to throw the light spear at Boruto but a little fireball hits his face and the three fallen angels take cautious and back away from Boruto to see who attacked, Boruto seeing who did that, he struggled to stand up and exclaim. Ravel Chan I told you to run away, what are you doing here? But I can't just leave you alone Boruto kun, Ravel exclaimed. And I told you that it was my fault that you were in this mess so why didn't you run away? Boruto yells out trying to talk sense to Ravel. But I still can't just leave you alone to fight against the fallen angels, Ravel exclaimed while her eyes start to tear up, while Boruto and Ravel were having their little argument the fallen angels let down their guards at the kids and walked about 5 meters away from them. Well well well, looks like the little miss come back to make it easier for us to kill both of you, the boss said evilly and continued to speak, oi you two, 
Just kill them already so we can do the job that Kokabiel had for us. Okay boss, the two hesitantly said because they wanted to rape Ravel but nonetheless they both prepared a light spear and aimed it at Boruto and Ravel. Boruto knew what was going to happen so he grabbed Ravel and cradled her towards his chest as he shielded her away from the attack. As the light spear was about to land the light spear was suddenly chopped in half by a giant axe and smoke started to emit from the ground creating a heavy smoke screen covering the culprit of the attack as the fallen angels back away. Ho ho, I must say young master that was quite brave of you, Escanor said as the smoke cleared out. Daytime old man, what are you doing here, Boruto exclaimed. Your dad asked me to help you and that young Ojo Usama that you were cradling right now, Escanor replied back. Once Escanor said that Boruto quickly let go of Ravel as he and Ravel were blushing heavily. Well anyways, it seems like I have to deal with those fallen angels, Escanor said in an intimidating voice as he turns to the two fallen angels. The two fallen was covered in fear as they felt that Escanor power levels go higher but quickly regained their composure and dash forward towards Escanor and both of them made a light spear out of their hands and stab him. The two couldn't believe it as their light spear only went about 1 to 2 centimeters in his flesh. Then Escanor asks them with a death glare. Is this, the best you can do? The two were covered in fear and quickly let go of their spear and tried to run away but Escanor quickly cut them down with his axe. Well that was disappointing, well I guess it your turn now, Escanor stated as he looked at the boss. I'm impressed devil, you managed to kill both of my subordinates but let me warn you that your attack won't reach because they had only one pair of wings but I have two pairs so I'll give you two options. The first option is let me kill you instantly so you won't feel pain or second option is I'll first torture you then kill you, so which one will you choose? The boss taunted in an arrogant tone, when the boss finished his taunting at Escanor, but Escanor simply stood still and hasn't said anything yet, good choice, now let me fucking kill you right now, the boss said assuming that Escanor chose option 1, the boss quickly made dozens of light spears and he made the light spears aiming at Escanor in the air 360 degrees. You are fucking going to die now. The boss uttered out as the light spear attacked Escanor creating a heavy smoke screen. The boss was certain that he killed him and was about to go to Ravel and Boruto but was quickly interrupted by the same person he thought that he killed. My mighty attack won't reach you, who decides that? My death by a fallen angel, who decides that? Escanor downright said that with no injuries whatsoever, the boss was dumbfounded to see this devil was uninjured, but Escanor continued to speak as if he is god while pointing his index finger at the air with a miniature sun above it. I decide such things, as soon as he said that he throws his miniature son at him while shouting cruel son. The boss paled and tried to run away but was quickly burnt to a crisp as the attack hits while destroying some parts of the forest. Once the fallen angel is no more he walked up to Boruto and Ravel and told them, well I guess we should go back to Naruto now? The two nodded and quickly followed him as they went back to the Phoenix mansion. Later in the Phoenix mansion thank you very much for saving my daughter Escanor Sama. Lady Phoenix said as she slightly bows down to show her gratitude. No no, instead of thanking me you should thank Boruto for protecting little Ojusama, Escanor said back which caused Boruto to blush at his words while Ravel was hiding behind her mum blushing. But still, I must thank you for taking care of them, Lady Phoenix said again. If that's so, then you're welcome Ojusama, Escanor replied back while bowing politely. Well anyways, we should go home now, right Boruto? Naruto asks Boruto but Boruto seems to be spaced out right now, oi Boruto what's wrong? Naruto asked Boruto in concern while shaking his shoulders. And nothing dad, it's just that I've been thinking about something, Boruto replied to his dad. And what were you thinking about, Naruto asked Boruto trying to push some answers from him. Dad, I want to be strong like you, daytime old man, Tatsumi Nichan, Akame Nechan and Kuroka Chan, Boruto said in a quiet voice. Okay. Then why do you want to be strong Boruto? Naruto asks but continued to say is it so you can kill all the fallen angels as revenge? What no, why would I want revenge, I want to be strong so I can protect Ravel Chan and my friends, Boruto exclaims at his father's words, Ravel was blushing at what Boruto just said and Lord and Lady Phoenix look satisfied because there might be a chance those two would be together. Hum, Escanor how's your training with Syroorg? Naruto asked as he turned to Escanor. It's going very well right now. His body has improved since a month ago, Escanor replied with a pride tone. Then I hope you don't mind training Boruto with him then? Naruto asked. I don't mind and plus it would be fun to see those two grow up and fight each other, Escanor remarked. That's good, let go home now should we? Naruto announced, by the way Lord Phoenix, I will consider the engagement depending on the future. Hi Naruto and have a safe trip back home, Lord Phoenix said. 
Thanks, let us go back home Sarachan and Boruto, Naruto said as he holds hands with Seraphal with his left hand while rubbing Boruto's head with his right hand. Hi. They both said as they begin to walk out of the main door of the mansion with Escanor following them from behind, but before they can walk out a certain arrogant boy came in from outside and as soon as he saw Boruto with his family he said. Huh, what this? A lowly peasant family like you are in the Fenix mansion. This caused Naruto's eyes to twitch at the boy arrogance but decide to talk to him as nice as possible. Ah. Uh, you must be Riser Fenix right? Yes I am Riser Fenix and how dare you call my name so casually, so in the name of the Fenix clan I Riser will kill you Riser remarked as he made a tiny little fireball out of his hand and was about to throw it at Naruto but was interrupted by Lord Fenix with Lady Fenix and Ravel. Riser, what do you think you're doing right now? As soon as Riser heard his father's voice he immediately stops and said. HMPH. You peasant are lucky, if it wasn't for my dad you would have been burnt to a crisp by now because after all I am from the Fenix family Riser said with arrogance. HMPH, Riser, if it wasn't for your old man then you and this mansion would have been burnt to a crisp by Escanor Sama over there, Lord Fenix exclaimed fearing that his mansion and his family could have been burnt to a crisp by Escanor's cruel son, once he said that he could feel a tremendous presence starting to get weaker and weaker thus making him relieved, but Riser was too arrogant to realize the powerful presence and arrogantly asked. What do you mean father, our Fenix flame are powerful and we are immortal plus how could I be burnt to crisp when I am immune to fire? Riser, do you know who Escanor is? Lord Fenix asked, but Riser shook his head which tells Lord Fenix that Riser doesn't know who Escanor is, is that so then Riser do you know who son Devilus then? Of course I know him, he is the strongest rook in the underworld under the Kyubi sage devil who can use flames that are as hot as the sun thus the devil society named him, sun devil but his flame is nothing compared to our Fenix flames right? Riser replied still being arrogant. No Riser. The sun devil real name is Escanor and his flame is from the sun while our flame is from the firebird phoenix and the sun flames and heat is much stronger than our phoenix flames. HMPH. So what father, it not like these lowly peasants over there is the sun devil right father? Riser said as he continued to be arrogant. Ah, uh, why the fuck do you have to jinx yourself Riser? Lord Fenix thought and said Riser believe it or not the tall blonde man with an axe is Escanor and that shorter blonde man is the Kyubi sage devil, once Lord Fenix said that Riser arrogance has turned to fear as he quickly bows down on his knees and begs forgiveness from Naruto. Kyubi sage devil sama and sun devil sama I am sorry for my actions on you too, please forgive this ignorant one. Nah it fine, plus you didn't know what we looked like so I forgive but you have to make sure that your pride and arrogance won't get your way or else you might die one day and call me Naruto. Naruto replied casually. Hi Naruto sama and I will gratefully take your advice, Riser said with no intention of taking Naruto's words seriously. Well okay then, Naruto casually replied while knowing that Riser didn't take his words seriously because of his ability to sense emotions, well anyway, we should go back now so Boruto says goodbye okay? Okay. Dad. Bye Ravel Chan. Lady Fenix, Lord Fenix and um what was your name again? Boruto said as he forgot what was Riser's name was. It riser, riser Fenix. so remember it you dumbass, an annoyed riser. Okay then, bye riser, Boruto said and once he finished saying his goodbyes he walks back home with his parents and Escanor. Seatree Mansion Boruto you will start your training to become stronger when Tatsumi and Akame comes back from their vacations, Naruto said to Boruto as he, Boruto, Seraphal and nighttime Escanor were sitting in the dining room having dinner. Okay, dad, but who will be my teacher when I train? Boruto eagerly asked wanting to know what he will be learning. Well let's see, your mum will be teaching you how to use your ice and water magic attacks if she has time from her satan work, is that all right for you honey? Hi I would love to teach Sotan and Botan on how to use their water and ice magic attacks when I have time darling, Seraphal replied as she went to give Naruto a quick kiss on his lips. Thanks, honey, but anyway Escanor will be training your body to the limit with a devil who is about 6 to 7 years older than you named Sairaorg and Tatsumi and Akame will be teaching you on how to use a sword and other weapons while I will teach you on how to use chakra. Wow. Thank you, mum, dad and nighttime old man, no problem son and we should eat soon cause I'm starving for ramen, Naruto joyfully said as he thinks about what type of ramen he will be eating but he was quickly interrupted by Seraphal as she pinched his cheeks and playfully said. Naru Chan you know eating ramen every day isn't healthy so why don't you eat something else tonight? EHH, but I want to eat ramen Sarah Chan, Naruto said as he wants to eat ramen. Naru Chan I said that you should eat something else, Seraphal said with a dangerous smile as she was still pinching Naruto's cheeks. But Sarah Chan I wa hi Sarah Chan, 
Naruto was about to strike back until he realizes how fucked up he was when he felt Sarah Chan grip to tighten on his cheeks. Good boy and you're such a good boy here is your reward, Seraphal childish said as she let go of his cheeks and hold his head to give him a passionate kiss. The kiss lasted for a while until it was stopped by Boruto as he shouted out. Oi mum, dad stop kissing and eat dinner for goodness sake right night time old man? H hi b boru t to sama, Escanor stuttered, see, even night time old man agrees dad so stop kissing already Boruto said. Tsks why is my son such a cockblocker, Naruto as he ate the dinner that the maids prepared just now. Two weeks later Boruto, Tatsumi Nikon will help you with your endurance and I will help you with your swordsmanship later, Akame said in a stoic cute voice. Hi, Akame Nichan, Boruto replied, good now let go to the lake nearby. Okay, Tatsumi Nikon Boruto excitedly said as he followed Tatsumi to the lake. At the lake okay where this Tatsumi said while pointing at the set of heavy armor on the ground nearby. Hi, Boruto said as he begins to wear the heavy armor, after finishing wearing the armor he asks so what do I do now? Tatsumi said nothing and walked up to Boruto, uh, what are you doing Tatsu aarrrggg? Boruto couldn't finish his question because Tatsumi pushed him down into the lake. Tatsumi Nikon what was that for and help me, the armor is heavy Boruto struggled to say as he was trying his hardest to not drown. No Boruto. Your endurance is next to nothing so you better work your ass up and believe it or not your dad made me do the same damn thing so don't whine about it, Tatsumi shouted out. But it too hard Tatsumi Nikon so can we please do something easier? Boruto complained to Tatsumi. Boruto do you really want to be stronger and protect Rebel? Tatsumi asked. Yes, be you then start swimming now, Tatsumi said with a death glare and Boruto instantly obeyed not wanting to feel Tatsumi's wrath and swim his hardest. Good, very good, well I guess I'll read my mags now. Two hours later okay Boruto, now I'm going to train you in your swordsmanship skill but first let's spar okay. Akame said as she handed out a wooden sword to Boruto. Okay Akame Nichan, Boruto tiredly replied, good, now let us start sparring, Akame said in her usual stoic cute voice as she dashes forward. Wait, wait Akame ne, Boruto shouted before he was cut off by a loud bang, Itai, Akame Nichan why did you hit my head? It because you didn't block the sword, Akame said pointing out the obvious. I know but you could have told me that you were going to attack, Boruto countered back. Boruto, would your enemies tell you beforehand that they would attack you? Akame asks Boruto and Boruto shook his head, so that is why you need to keep your guards up when you battle with other people. Hi, Akame Nichan thank you for your advice, Boruto happily said because he learned something new. Okay, let us start sparring again, Akame said as she readies her wooden sword and begins to strike. Wait, wait, time out Akame Nichan, Itai. Boruto shouted as his tor cough cough I mean training with Akame lasted for two hours as well. So after finishing his training with Akame Boruto later met Escanor in his daytime form in Cyroorg and began training with them by having his ass kicked from Cyroorg newest power Tuki, then after his training with them, his last training for the day is with his father Naruto, Naruto trained Boruto so Boruto can improve with his chakra control and etc and so Boruto has been doing this training regime for the last 10 years. 10 years later currently, Right now Naruto is in the Lucifer mansion with the current Lucifer Sirzex and his wife or maid Grafia standing behind him as he and Naruto are sitting down on a couch facing each other while having a conversation. So, Sirzex why have you call me here today? Naruto asked. Naruto, it's about the favor that I won from many years ago, Sirzex replied. I'm guessing that you want to cash in right now? Naruto asked. That's right, Sirzex confirmed, so what do you want me to do? Naruto said as he drinks his tea that Grafia prepared beforehand. In about a week your son is about to go to a school called Kuo Academy with my sister and her peerage who is already in it, so I wanted you and maybe some of your peerages to go there as well to protect them as a teacher or something, Sirzek asks hoping that Naruto will accept his favor. If I'm not wrong, Sona-chan also go to that school so I think Sarah-chan would have asked me to protect her as well and there hasn't been anything interesting in the underworld so why not I guess, Naruto thought to himself before he replied to Sirzex, geez. You're such a siskon, but fine. I will go to the school and protect them if only the situation is too dangerous for them. For example, like a god suddenly comes and attack them. Hi, that is understandable and thank you for agreeing to my favor, Naruto. Sirzex thankfully said to Naruto. Okay then, I will be leaving now, Sirzex and Grafia, Naruto said. Sure, but would you mind giving me some of your Icha Icha Boao? Ow, Grafia, it's Hupwithers, Sirzex exclaimed as Grafia pinched his cheeks till it went red like a tomato. Sirzex-sama, 
as the Lucifer of the underworld right now you shouldn't be reading such thing or else the younger generation will copy you, Graphia said in her stoic cold voice. But Graphia, there is some hot shit in th, but before Sears X could finish his sentence Graphia gave him a cold glare and Sears X immediately stopped what he was going to say, meanwhile, Naruto left so Graphia can beat the shit out of Sears X. One week later in the Sea Tree Mansion with Naruto, Seraphal, Boruto and Naruto's peerage. Boruto you will be going to Kuo Academy so get ready to leave with me and Tatsumi, Naruto said as he gets his stuff ready. Wait. Why are you coming with me as well? Boruto curiously asks. Yeah. Why'd I have to go with him? You could have chosen someone else. Tatsumi hollered as he watched in confusion as Naruto moved around the room. Well, Sears X asked me to look after his little sister Rias, so I thought why not, Sarah Chan would have asked me to go take care of Sona, isn't that right Sarah Chan? Naruto said and Seraphal sheepishly nodded her head. It's okay, I promise to look after her and you know I'll never break my promise ya no, Naruto exclaimed. After all those years together with Naruto, Seraphal found out one of the best things about him, the best thing about him was that he had never broken a promise when they were together, Seraphal happily replied. Hi, Naruto and kissed him on the lips, oi, that doesn't explain why I have to go with you guys, said the nearly forgotten Tatsumi. Well, Kuroka can't come because her sister still has a sister complex, Akame would just eat meat every day and Eskinor as a teacher would kill the students with impossible training routine for humans, so that just leaves you so you will be coming with me to help, Naruto explains after he broke the kiss with Seraphal who could only pout. Well, good luck then Tatsumi Kuroka said as she left the room to do her shit, then it was Akame and she said when you come back I'll be waiting for you with meat so you can eat then left, then it was Eskinor who said it's okay Tatsumi, when you come back I'll double your training for all the training you will miss so don't worry and left the room. Tatsumi could only pale as his subordinate left him, well, we should go now, Naruto said and followed by an exited high by Boruto and a bitter high from Tatsumi, hey Sarachan, could you please open up a teleport circle for us? Naruto asks. Hi. Darling Seraphal said as she made a magic circle on the ground with a leviathan symbol on it. Okay, thank you, honey, Naruto said as he gives Seraphal a quick kiss on the cheeks, okay, let go now. Hi Boruto exclaimed and Tatsumi just shrugged as they went inside the magic circle to go to Kuo town. Ehmok class, today we have a new student, you may come in now, said the teacher, from the door of the class, you can see a blonde boy with average height wearing the Kuo Academy school uniform. Hey, isn't he quite cute, whispered by one female student. I know right, he looks like one of those guys from K-pop or something, said another female student, while the girls are gossiping about the blonde boy. Issei Hyodo and his two friends who are sitting next to him at the side of the class weren't as enthusiastic as the girls. TSKs, another pretty boy is in the school, Issei said in annoyance. I know right, now the girls in the school will be falling head over heels for him and Kiba now, Matsuda exclaimed. One of Issei's friends. Don't worry he is noth, oi, you three perverts shut the hell up, he is about to introduce himself to the class, Motohama, another one of Issei's friends, wanted to say something but was interrupted by two girls named Katase and Murayama, the three boys finally have their attention on the blonde boy. EHM, hello everybody, my name is Shitori Uzumaki Boruto, I know Japanese names usually don't have middle names but foreigners may have middle names and because Boruto is mostly blonde then people might think he is from Europe or something. Also even though I have Shidori as my last name I'm not Sona Shidori younger brother but her nephew, so what my interest is hamburgers my favorite food is hamburgers and my love is hamburgers and my girlfriend or finance I guess, Boruto cheerfully said with a giggle, when the class knew he had a girlfriend most of the girls in the class were disappointed and the boys were jealous. Meanwhile in class 3a, I think, okay class, due to medical issues with your teacher, so we will be having a new teacher and a new student in this class from today onwards, said the principal of Kuo Academy, okay you two can come in now. As soon as the principal said that, two males came in from the hallway and went into the classroom and as they come in everybody in the class especially the girls were gossiping about how cute or hot they are. The taller of the two has blonde spiky hair with whisker marks on his checks and he was wearing a black suit with glasses, the shorter of the two has brown spiky hair and was wearing the Kuo Academy uniform but in a delinquent way with his collar up, shirt untucked and a wallet chain on the right side of his pant. Um, hello everybody. My name is Namikaze Naruto but please call me Naruto Sensei and starting from today and onwards I'll be your new teacher, also standing beside me is a new student and why don't you introduce yourself, young man, Naruto cheerfully said to the class. Um hi, I'm mine Tatsumi but just call me Tatsumi and no honorifics, Tatsumi bluntly said. Eh, hey, that's all? 
Naruto asked with his eyes squinting at Tatsumi. That's all, Tatsumi assured Naruto, well alrighty then, I leave the class to you Naruto-sensei, said the principal and left the class leaving Naruto, Tatsumi and the class alone. Well, we need to start class soon, so Tatsumi why don't you sit next to so I mean the miss with short black hair and glasses, what is your name? Ee excuse me for not introducing myself, my name is Shidori Sona and I'm the student council president of this school so if you need anything do please ask me or the student council, said by the now named girl Shidori Sona. Thanks, I'll make sure to do just that so Tatsumi why don't sit next to Miss Shidori now? Naruto asked while turning his head away from Sona to Tatsumi. Hi, Tatsumi replied as he sighed and started walking to sit next to Sona. Shit, why are they here? Wait if those two are here then that means. Shit now I have troublemakers in the school now. Sona stressfully thought as Tatsumi sat next to her. Okay class, since we're let us start class shall we, come let's see. For the first period I'll be teaching, I'm sorry class. I think I forgot something in the principal office so please excuse me for leaving the class, Naruto quickly said and left the class in the blink of an eye. Once he closes the door of the class he looked left and right of the hallway to make sure that no one is here. Once making sure no one is here he had both of his hand making his signature move and was about to yell cage bunch and no jutsu but was interrupted by Miss Student Council President herself. Sensei, may I ask what are you doing here in the school? Sona coldly said. Miss Sona I am here to educate the young, why else would I be here? Naruto boldly responded to Sona. I'm sorry, let me rephrase myself, what are you doing here in the school Onisama? Sona said as she rephrases herself. As I said just before, I am here to educate the young, Naruto responded but this time with a nervous tone. I'm serious right now Onisama, why are you here in the school? Sona questioned Naruto with a sharp voice. Okay you got me, I just wanted to see my cute little sister, Naruto jokingly said but when he saw Sona's dagger eyes looking at his he decides to tell her the truth, you're too serious sometimes Sona-chan, Naruto said as he sighed but carried on I'm here to protect you guys from danger because of a favor from Sirzex. Hmm, I see. But why is Tatsumi here as well? Sona questioned. He will be helping me if things get too out of hand, Naruto answered back. Onisama if you are here does that mean he is here as well then? Sona asked Naruto to find out if Boruto is here at school. Yeah, he's here, Naruto replied, sigh, I see, I'll be going back to class now so don't take too long, Sona said as she went back to her class leaving Naruto by himself. Once Naruto confirms that Sona went back he only said cage bunch and no jutsu and let his clone do the complicating stuff as he eats his ramen somewhere in Japan. Two weeks later oi, you two move it, I want to see the amazing view as well. Please, come on those huge tits and along with the thick ass. Issei pleaded to Matsuda and Motohama who are currently peeping at girls that are changing in the changing room outside the kendo club dojo. He is accompanied along with his friends Matsuda, Motohama and Boruto, as you can see, Issei is a high school student with an average height with short spiky brown hair with two short locks behind his hair and light brown eyes, at the moment Issei is wearing his school uniform which consists of an unbuttoned blazer over his white long-sleeved shirt with black highlights and a red shirt underneath it. Hell no! Motohama exclaimed with blood running down his nose. Yeah, why should we? Matsuda shouted to back up Motohama who also has blood running down his nose. What do you mean why should you? I thought we were a soulmate, you guys! Issei exclaimed. Soulmate! Soulmate! If we were soulmate then why didn't you share us the limited edition book from the Icha Icha series? Matsuda replied as he shakes his butt lift to right while watching the kendo girls getting changed through a tiny hole in the wall of the dojo. Yeah, I can't believe we called you as our soulmate, Motohama said as he too was doing the same thing as Matsuda. See, Mon, the Icha Icha books are gold and I can't have you guys destroy it before I read it, Issei exclaimed to his friends. Well, have you finished reading it? Matsuda questioned Issei. Yeah, have you finished it? Motohama asked, yeah I have, so I bring it to school, Issei said to the two guys that are peeping at the girls. Hell yeah! Shouted by both of them, but we still won't let you see them, Matsuda continued. Oi! Issei shouted and about to continue until Boruto interrupted their conversation. You know, if each of you has a girlfriend then you could see her body, hold hands with her or even have sex if your relationship gets better so why don't you try and get a girlfriend for fuck's sake? HMPH, that easy for you to say because you already have a girlfriend with your pretty looks plus we don't have good looks as you do so we can't get a girl even if we wanted to, Issei exclaimed. It isn't always about good looks you know, Boruto calmly stated. Oh really, then tell me how your girlfriend fell in love with you then, 
Issei questioned with jealousy. Well, I nearly died by protecting her from a fall I mean a rapist, Responso respond as he quickly fixes his mistake. Damn, no wonder she falls in love with you, ya no, you never told us about your girlfriend for example what's her personality and what does she look like? Issei asked as millions of images of girls flooded in his head. Hum, let's see, she's cute, Boruto replied wait, that's all? Issei dumbfoundedly asked. Yep, that's all, but anyways you guys should really get a girlfriend, Boruto said. Oh ho, don't worry we will, oi you too it is time. Issei shouted to his two friends. Okay. Ahem if you have despair he will help, Matsuda shouted as he stops peeking and joined Issei. If you are lonely he will help, Motohama shouted who also stopped peeking and joined the other two. If you have no life he will help, shouted by Issei this time. He is, all of them shouted at the same time, the man, Matsuda loudly yelled. The myth. Motohama continued, the legend. Issei finished and all together they shouted out. T R U U U U U U C K K U U N N N. Man, you guys are corny, Boruto said while shaking his head at them. Oi, so what if we are desperate? Issei exclaimed and was about to continue his rant when the Kendo girls came out with their shinai. You three pervert, how dare you peek at us? Kates shouted out. Okay girls, show them no mercy. Murayama shouted out and the girls chased the three with their shinai. S3 pervert? But there are four of shit. That bastard knew the girls were coming so he runs away without telling us. Issei shouted out. Oi Issei, stop talking and start running or else we are going to lose our virginity to those shinai sticks, Matsuda yelled. But I don't want to lose my virginity from shinai sticks, Issei cried out loud. Then fucking start running then. Motohama yelled out. Hi! Issei cried and started to run for his life. Meanwhile on a tree nearby Sai. Why did the old man ask me to watch out for Hyodo Issei? I mean, I can feel some magic from him and maybe some sort of sacred gear but his magic can't even compare to a high class baby and surely his sacred gear can't be any good, Boruto thought and sighed again. He looked around the school and spotted Sona with his peerage. I should maybe talk to her cause we haven't really talked to each other since I transferred into this school. Boruto thought and jumped off the tree sneak behind her peerage and quickly dashed forward to Sona and hugged her from behind without the peerage members knowing. Hey Oba-chan, I love you, Boruto said and kept on hugging Sona. Oi, Baka nephew, how many times have I told you to stop calling me Oba-chan and call me Sona-san and stop hugging me, the whole school will see us and it will destroy my image as the student council president, Sona exclaimed with her face blushing as red as a tomato. Okay. But I'll stop if only you call me by my name without honorifics Oba-chan, Boruto replied. Urge, fine, Boruto, Sona hesitantly said, see, that wasn't so hard Sona-san, Boruto cheerfully said and let go of Sona. President nephew sure is cute, Momo said who is one of Sona's bishop. I know right but too bad he is already taken, Rea said. Really, who is it, Momo shouted, Revel Phoenix, Subaki said as she joined in the conversation. Really? How did that happen Momo exclaimed I heard that he protected her in a forest from fallen angels till the sun devil came to help them, Tsubaki said to tell the two girls. Kya. That's so cute. Rea squealed out loud. Kya. I know right. Momo squealed out loud as well with Rea. Girls, calm down. Everybody in the school can hear you too, Tsubaki sternly said to the two girls. Right, sorry, both of them said as their heads are hung down and started to again to listen to their king conversation with her nephew. So Boruto, you know where Onisama is, cause I can't seem to find him anywhere? Sona asked. Oh, he's at a meeting with someone important that I don't know, Boruto answered back. Nani. Then what about teaching the class then? Sona exclaimed. He has his clones remember, Boruto said and made a shadow clone of himself that was perfectly identical to himself to show how useful the shadow clones are. Right, how could I forgot? Sona said inside, meanwhile with Naruto. Walking down through the hallway of a hotel is Naruto who is looking at each door in the hallway to find the room that he needs to be in, 209, 210, yosh. 211, Naruto said out loud and knock on the door knock knock, after a few seconds, the door click and open and inside the room was a man with black hair, golden bangs and a black goatee, he was wearing a v-neck maroon long coat with a wide open high collar that opens up to the hem, he also has two belts that are black around his waist and grey slack pants with brown leather shoes on. It been a while now Naruto, the man said to Naruto in a very carefree tone. Yeah, it has Azazel, Naruto casually responded, well, why don't we go in and chat in the living room then, 
The now named Azazel said while moving to the side a bit to give Naruto the space to go in. K, okay, thanks, Naruto said and walked inside to the living room. You want tea? Azazel asked, nah, I'm fine, Naruto replied and sat down on the sofa in the living room. Okay then, Azazel said and sat down on the sofa that was next to the sofa that Naruto is sitting in 90 degrees angle, did that make sense to you guys? So, Naruto what did you want to talk about today cause it must be important if you wanted to have a chat with me as soon as possible? Azazel asked as he stroked his goatee. Yeah, I do. So, what is it? Did you by any chances send four fallen angels to stop the new red dragon emperor? Naruto questioned. Aish. To think that he was wielding the boosted gear, Azazel said as if he was talking to himself while rubbing the back of his head up and down. So I'm going to assume that you sent them there to keep an eye on him, Naruto stated. Yeah that's right but how did you know that it was the boosted gear? Azazel asked. Karama and my sensory skill, oh, okay, but that not really why you are here right? Yeah, because yesterday night I created a clone to scout a church where I felt the presence of fallen angels to find out why they're here and guess what, Naruto said. They planning to kill the boy right? Azazel said. That's right, so I wanted to know if you ordered them to kill him, Naruto questioned. Nah, I only told them to keep an eye on him not kill him. The last thing I want is another bloody war, Azazel said but sadly said the last sentence. Yeah, nobody wants another war but you got any ideas why they aren't following your orders especially the girl call Rainer. Well, shit, didn't know that she wanted my attention that much, maybe I should do stuff to her that is written in your book's eye, Azazel pervertedly said. Shut the fuck up and just fuck your pocket pussy with your 5 inch dick and every girl in the world will be happy, Naruto said in an annoyed tone. Wow. My heart actually feels like it has been stabbed and it's 7 inches, Azazel jokingly said. Azazel, if things become out of hands they might die you know, Naruto said very seriously. All goods, if they can't follow my orders then they have no use for me so feel free to do whatever you want, Azazel lazily said. Okay, thanks, I'll be leaving now, Naruto said as he stands up and was about to leave until Azazel asked. Oi Naruto, where are you right now? Eating ramen of course, what else would I be doing? Naruto replied and puff, as Naruto disappeared leaving smokes behind. Sigh, I wanted to ask if he could give me his latest Icha Icha books, Azazel thought it then made a magic circle in the air and stick his right arm into it and once it comes back out again, in his hands was the Icha Icha paradise book, oh well, I should better start reading now. Meanwhile with the real Naruto slurp slurp, I see, oh well, slurp, Naruto said as he continues to eat his ramen. With Issei on a bridge in the evening sigh at this rate, Fapping to Icha Icha books and porn is the closest thing for me to ever fuck someone which means I'll be a virgin and die as a virgin if this continues, Issei despairingly said to himself as he crosses his arms, put it on the handrail of the bridge and lay his head down on it. Clack clack uh, excuse me, you're Issei Hyodo from Kuo Academy right am I correct? A beautiful girl with long black hair wearing a high school uniform. Huh, yeah, that's me, Issei confusingly said but his mind is thinking something else, holy shit don't recognize that uniform but who gives a fuck, she is nice. Um, I want to ask you something, the girl said. Sure what is it? Issei asked, AR are you, are you seeing anybody right now, the girl asked. No, not really, Issei replied, holy shit, don't tell me that she's going to ask me out, nah that's impossible, she's probably lost or something. That's great, so if it possible, do do you want to go out with me, the girl cheerfully asked. Did she really just ask me out? Issei you better not fuck this up, thought and said, I'm um, sure but why? I've been watching you, whenever I see you, my heart always skipped a beat so I realized that it must be love at first sight, so I liked for you to be my boyfriend, the girl confessed. Okay then, I'll be your boyfriend, Issei said, really, yay, so since we are a couple why don't we go on a date on an afternoon then, the girl cheered and asked. Sure, let go on a date then, Issei happily said. Okay then. Bye and I'm really glad that you're my boyfriend now, the girl happily said. It okay but what is your name? Issei asked, oh, I'm sorry, I still haven't introduced myself, my name is Yuma, Amano Yuma, the now named girl said. Okay then, bye Yuma, Issei said, bye, Issei, Yuma said as she waves goodbye to him and left Issei by himself. Holy shit. I have a girlfriend now, I might not die as a virgin now. Issei happily shouts out loud and went downstairs of the bridge and went home. But once Issei left a petite girl with white hair and hazel eyes wearing the female school uniform of Kuo Academy appear looking at Issei running away while licking her popsicle but suddenly, 
Sat 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 looks like fallen angels had started to make their moves I Kaneko chan. Don't sue me. It seems like Rias had sent you to keep a close eye on him didn't she Kaneko chan, Boruto said with an amused tone. Boruto senpei, what are you doing here? Kaneko said with a cute voice but no emotion at all as she continues to lick her popsicle. The same reason as you, keeping a close eye on him, Boruto replied as he shrugs his shoulders. Who asked you to? Kaneko questioned Boruto and licked her popsicle. My dad did, Boruto replied as he walks up to the rails and leaned back on it. Okay, I'm going back to Rias to give my report now, Kaneko said as she finished her popsicle then throw the stick in the bin and was about to open up a teleportation magic circle but stop when Boruto said this. When are you going to make up with your sister, she misses you you know. I'm not going to talk to a murderer that went chaos, Kaneko slightly shouted out as if she nearly lost her cool. Kaneko chan she didn't go chaotic and she murdered him in his peerage to protect you. Boruto said with a slightly louder voice. She could be lying to you Boruto senpei, Kaneko said as she tried to keep her cool. Look Kaneko chan, whenever she sleep at night she would be always hugging the pillow and repeatedly said one word, Sharon, every single damn time, Boruto exclaimed. Be quiet, please, just be quiet, I don't want to talk about her, Kaneko cry as tears is about to come out of her eye. Sigh Boruto sighed and walk up to Kaneko and pat her head. Look, if you ever want to talk to your sister or want my help, I'll be there for you okay, Boruto said and ninja hop and left. Baka Kaneko whispered and wiped her tears that managed to come out of her eye and create a teleportation circle and entered inside. On Sunday him, he sure is having fun with the fallen angel, Boruto said out loud to himself as he stands on the top of the roof spying on Issei and Yuma. Sai asterisk when will it get into us, him, they going to the park where it is isolated right now, then that means she's making her move. Boruto said and follow the two to the park, as Boruto catch up to them he then finds a spot to hide in the tree and once hidden he felt two similar presents. Looks like Rias and Akano are here as well, Boruto thought then put his attention to the pair and he could clearly hear what the girl just said. Would you, die for me? Would you, die for me? Huh? I'm sorry, my ears just went deaf for a second, could you repeat what you just said again please ha ha ha? Issei asked as he put his right pinky finger in his right ear and scratches it. Sure. Yuma happily said and walked forward to Issei until her mouth is close enough to Issei's ear so he can hear her whenever she whispers, I said, would you die for me? Yuma evilly whispered. I'm sorry Yuma but did you just say, would you die for me? Issei uncomfortably asked. You know, the date we had was fun and all but too bad that you were going to die today, so because the date was fun I'll do you a favor and instantly kill you. Yuma shouted out without her sweet cute voice that Issei knows but with a dark and crueler tone and black feathered wings sprouted out of her back as she jumped up and start to float while her clothes magically started to change from her dress into a very seductive revealing black latex outfit. Holy shit. She's flying in her clothes, it's, it's, holy shit I can see her tits, Issei mentally shouted out as Yuma magically changed clothes in the air, once she magically finished changing her clothes to a very seductive revealing black latex outfit. She held up her right arm straight above her head and opened up her hand and created a red, maroon like shiny looking light spear over her palm. Why why wait? Why are you killing me? I am just a high school student that needs to masturbate every day. Issei pleaded as fear overwhelmed him that it made him paralyzed. Well, if you want to know why I'm killing you, then go blame the person who gave you that sacred gear in this peasant body of yours. Yuma wickedly shouted out as she throws her light spear straight into Issei's chest turning around ready to fly expecting that Issei is good as dead from the light spear as she hears a boom. Sound. Oh, by the way. My name is Rainer, not Yuma, but it doesn't matter now since you're good as dead now, Rainer shouted as she began to fly away. How nice of you to introduce yourself to me fallen angel Rainer, Boruto casually says while standing in front of a shocked and scared Issei who had fallen down on his ass. Tisk. Wait, what was that? Rainer asks as she descends from the air to the ground. Rias you can come out now, Boruto suddenly set out and out of nowhere a girl with a busty rack, long red crimson hair, blue eyes and was wearing the Kuo Academy school uniform for females appeared from the bushes. Looks like your sensory skills have gotten better Boruto sama, Rias praised to Boruto. Thank you Rias senpei, so Akano you can come out as well, Boruto said and once again a girl with an even bigger rack then Rias came out from the bushes with purple eyes, long jet black hair and same as Rias. She too was wearing the female uniform for Kuo Academy. Arara. It really has improved Boruto sama and maybe down there has improved as well Boru to sama wink wink. Akano seductively as she came out from the bushes and stand next to where Rias is. Yeah, no, 
I don't really need a Sunere girlfriend chasing me to death thank you very much, Boruto said in a fearful tone thinking about what Ravel will do to him. Giggle giggle, no one can stop her if the topic is about you Boruto, Akano giggled and said playfully. Um, Boruto, what going on right now and why are Rias senpei and Akano senpei here and also what happened to Yuma, Issei nervously said while still has his ass on the ground. Oh shit, I nearly forgot about you, Boruto just casually said. Oi. What do you mean by th chop? Issei tried to shout out something but Boruto just chopped his neck with a slicing hand and knocked Issei out cold. Oi, Rias and Akano, take this guy for me would ya? Issei shouted out. Okay Boruto. Rias replied and walk up to Issei and pick him up using magic while Akano followed behind her. Oh, and don't do anything funny to him Rias, Boruto said. I have no idea what you are talking about Boruto, Rias uncomfortably replied while sweating a little bit. You know exactly what I mean Rias, Boruto coldly said with a death glare straight on Rias. Hi, Rias slowly said and moved to the edge of the bushes to see what will happen between Boruto and Rainer. Hey, what can you do by yourself little devil, why don't you call your two devil friends? Rainer shouted out while losing with confidence and arrogance. Are you sure about that? I mean she is from the Gremory family and the next heiress to be exactly ya no, so if you want to anger the Gremory family then sure I'll call her here. Act act actually never am I nah, it's all good I can call her here if you want, no need to be shy. Rainer tried to say something but was rudely interrupted by Boruto with a smug smile. Shut the fuck up. Rainer shouted out and flapped her wings in the air and created a light spear out of her hand and throw it down on Boruto. But before the spear could hit Boruto, Boruto created a spear of his own that was made out of ice and countered back by piercing the light spear that was made by Rainer while the spear was heading towards Rainer. As the spear approached closer and closer to Rainer, she only just managed to dodge it but was grazed by the spear on the left side of her face. Blood began to dribble down from the left side of her face from the graze that she received from the ice spear. Rainer lifted her hand up to the side of her face and slowly dragged her hand down on her face. Blood began to trickle down on her hands and she trembles in anger. You, how dare you, you piece of devil shit. Rainer angering shouted out as she created multiple light spears from her magic circle and with anger. Sent them down on Boruto and smoke appeared once it hit its target. Rainer felt relieved that a danger threat had died but was mistakenly wrong, because as smokes clears out, instead of a dead corpse that Rainer thought would appear, it was a big ice flower that was used as a shield appeared and behind it was Boruto casually standing up with a smirk on his face. My turn, Boruto stated and all of a sudden a shit ton of magic crest started to appear out of nowhere behind Boruto as the magic crest began to zap ice like lightning ready to attack its prey. That magic crest, it's the Sea Trees clan magic crest, who are you? Rainer angrily shouted out. My name is Boruto Uzumaki Sea Tree. Boruto shouted as all of his magic crests beamed in attentiveness ready to go. B wa ha 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 ha. Rainer crazily started to laugh out boisterously, are you a fucking idiot, you know that the head of Sea Tree clan only has two daughters and even if you're from the Sea Tree clan, you are probably a bastard child. Rainer laughed out loud barely controlling her laughter. But the old man isn't my dad Yano, Boruto simply said. Oh, enlighten me, who is your father Seatree? Rainer asks while she was clearly mocking him. My old man name is Naruto Uzumaki, Boruto loudly stated. Ha, huh, lies. You sure that your father's name? Caused I have never heard a person called Naruto Uzumaki in the Seatree clan before ha 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 ha, Rainer exclaimed and started to laugh out loud. Come on, you seriously don't know him? Then how about Kayubi Sage Devil you must know that name, Boruto exclaimed in annoyance. Nope Rainer just blurted out, ah, that's right, except for us devils, you guys call him, Behemoth, the magical beast king of earth which I think it is quite accurate, Boruto smugly stated, smirking at her. Rainer couldn't believe her ears, her heart stopped beating, she couldn't feel her hands, her body was numb, her eyes dilated with fear and shock swimming around in her eyes, her posture went slack, she couldn't believe it she had to get away. As soon as she collected herself, feeling to her body coming back to her, she flew away as fast as she could, she didn't know where she was going but she didn't care, all she cared about was getting away. Before she could even move a muscle, Boruto appeared before her kicking her right across the face sending her crashing towards the ground. Her mind was fuzzy, she couldn't think, her back arched in pain as she spat blood from her mouth, the metallic taste staining her mouth. Vision shaky, she opened her eyes, the world around her spinning as she focused on the figure before her. It may have been just a simple trick of the mind, but she could swear she saw two Bordos standing before her, both with a feral look in their eyes. You, 
came the shaky statement from Rainer. Why are there two of you? The confusion practically bleed from her voice as she stared questioningly at the two figures before her, still recovering from the previous attack. Well that doesn't really matter now does it I? Boruto casually stated as he slowly made his way towards her, her form shaking in fear at the obvious answer that was to come. How about I give you a proposal huh? Boruto whispered as he bent down so his mouth was next to her ear. If you can survive my next attack, I'll let you leave this place peacefully, how about that I? Boruto really whispered as he blew in her ear making her tremble in fear and anticipation for what was to come. But if you don't, Boruto trailed off, the obvious threat lingering in the air making it even colder than it could have been. SS so if I SS survive T the next day attack, you'll LL let me G go? Rainer shakily replied. Bits of hope shone in her voice as her eyes got a twinkle of hope in them. That's right sweetheart, if you can manage to survive my attack, I'll let you go peacefully, Boruto stated. Eyes half lidded as he slowly took steps back, his footsteps echoing in the already quiet environment. Rainer couldn't believe what she was hearing, she could go freely if she managed to survive the attack. Hope simmered in her eyes as she slowly got up, her limbs trembling as she stood on her two feet, widening her stance as she got ready to withstand the attack. She doesn't even look good, I'll just make sure that she survives this attack, barely. Boruto opened up his hands, widening his fingers as the wind around him started to pick up. Wisps of blue wind blades started to form within the palm of his hand, the wind around him picking up, forming a shiny blue sphere within the palm of his hand. The atmosphere around him changed into that of someone who was very dangerous, his eyes glowing in eerie blue as the air around him became ten times more deadlier than it was. All of a sudden, everything stopped, the wind that was around Boruto had settled down and a spinning wind blade ball of chakra formed within the palm of Boruto's hand. Boruto eyed Rainer, who was currently struggling to stand firm on the ground ready for the attack. Don't worry, there was a pregnant pause, you won't die from this attack, maybe, Boruto said and threw his Rasengan at Rainer, launching his hand back, he launched the Rasengan out of his hand, the ball of chakra whirling as it curved and deformed in mid-air, the air ripple as all of a sudden, the Rasengan disappeared, vanishing into nothing. Does that mean that I can go now? Rainer asks and Boruto said nothing, assuming that Boruto attack failed. Rainer began to laugh hysterically as she laughed out ha. You devil shit. Can't even hit me even when I'm injured, looks like being the son of behemoth, the magical beast king of earth means shit. Well, I be taking my leave thank you very much, and with that, she began to fly off but Borut interrupted her. I wouldn't think so sweetheart, Boruto cockily replied as his face burst out into a wide grin. Insanity swimming through his eyes as his eyes dilated, then all of a sudden Rainer was hit in her stomach area by sharp wind blade that she couldn't see and was sent flying through the air like a speeding bullet with immense pain and deep server cuts. Sigh the power of the Rasengan is nowhere close to the old man but at least it can surprise the shit out of my opponents, shit. The direction I just sent her, isn't that where the abandoned church, don't know if devils get head pain by saying church, is, hope the council doesn't charge me for property damage, Boruto said and walked back to where Rias and Akeno were hiding in the bushes. Boruto sama, that was a splendid battle you fought just now, Rias said as politely as possible to Boruto. Era 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 Rias. Boruto sama basically annihilated that fallen angel, right? Boruto winked. Akano purred out and winked. Yeah, um, so, where is Issei? I'm taking back to my home and just call me Boruto cause I'm not too fond of formality, Boruto irritatedly said because of the formality. Oh, he is right over there in the bush and still unconscious, Boruto, Rias said and roughly point where Issei was in the bush. Okay, I'll be taking him to my house and tell him about the three fractions and stuff like that. Boruto said while walking to where Issei was and threw him up on his shoulders and carried him with ease. Thanks, Rias, by the way, Rias, why didn't you ask him instead of trying to kill me? Boruto asked. I was afraid that he would reject my offer, Rias answered. Reject your offer? Ha, huh. no way Boruto said and laughs in laughter, anyways if you need help with Riser then ask me if there is nothing much you can do, so don't kill humans that are doesn't know about us and them, Boruto confidently said. Okay Boruto. But what are you going to do to him now? Are you going to brainwash him or something now cause he now knows of our existence? Nah, I sense something in him but don't know what it is and plus my old man wanted me to keep a close eye on him. Oh that's right, Kaneko did say something about him smelling like a dragon, Rias stated. Okay, I'll keep that in mind, later Rias and Akano Boruto exclaimed. By Boruto both of the girls waved and said at the same time and Boruto waved back and created a big magic crest in front of him and walked through it with Issei on his shoulders. Minutes before the abandoned church middle Kalawarner Donasik. In the abandoned church at on top of the hill, there are three fallen angels. 
One male and two females. The male fallen angel is named Donasik and he is a middle-aged looking man with short black hair and dark blue eyes. His attire consisted of a pale gray trench coat over a white shirt and an ascot. He also wears black pants and shoes, a pair of black gloves and a back fedora. One of the females named Kalawarner was a tall and buxom woman with brown eyes and long, navy blue hair that covered her right eye, her attire consisted of a maroon trench coat-like top with a wide collar, a matching miniskirt, and black-heeled shoes, the trench coat top was open at her chest. Giving view to her breasts and cleavage, she also wore a gold necklace around her neck. She appears to wear a white shirt underneath her top, but it can only be seen from the bottom. The other female fallen angel was named Middled. She was a girl with blonde hair styled into twin tails and blue eyes. She wore gothic Lolita attire, which consisted of a black Lolita dress with white frills, a large black bow on the front, and a green jewel embedded on the collar, white thigh high socks, and black shoes. She also wore a large black bow on top of her hair. Anybody know when Rainair comes back? Middled asks with annoyance. Don't worry, Middled. Rainair will kill that boy and come back sooner or later, Kalawarner reassured Middled and stroke her hair. Hey, I'm not a kid so stop stroking my hair, Middled shouted with irritation. Kalawarner is right Middled, plus Rainair is coming back right now and she's traveling at incredible speeds as well, Donasik said to the two fallen angels, say I think Rainair improve her speed cause I must say, the speed she going is quite fast, Donasik continued. So she's coming back soon, Middled questioned. Yes, but she ain't stopping, Donasik stated heck, she is going to crash so, before Donasik can finish his sentence, all of a sudden up above, the roof crumbled to debris and Rainair crashed to the floor with the debris around her, the first person to react was Kalawarner as she quickly run to where the barely alive Rainair crashed. Oh my god! Rainair what fucking happened to you? Kalawarner exclaimed in concern, barely alive, Rainair could only muster a few words, I w want re, venge, against that shitty d-devil. Oh, Rainer, who the fuck turned you into this mess? Donasik loudly asked as he followed Kalawarner from behind, but Rainer couldn't muster any words. Oi, Rainer, tell me, Donasik exclaimed. Bb hey, moth son, Rainer struggled to say and quickly fell unconscious. Behemoth son, middled questioned. She doesn't mean Behemoth, the magical beast king of the earth, right? Kalawarner said. Who the fuck did you battle against, Rainer? Donasik questioned. Boruto at his home outside of Boruto's home, a magic crest appeared out and out came Boruto with Issei on his shoulders, once the magic crest disappeared, Boruto started to walk to his front door and swiftly open the door, once inside he take of his shoes and entered through the living room, just then, Tatsumi briefly opened up the door of the kitchen, releasing the wonderful smell of cooked dinner waiting for Boruto. Oh, you're back, good timing I am nearly finished with my curry it is going to be Oishi Dezu, Tatsumi said while holding his soup ladle. Shit. You sound like a housewife Tatsumi, no homo though, Boruto exclaimed and dropped Issei on the couch. Fuck you Boruto. What happened to the Boruto that will always call me Tatsumi Onichin? Tatsumi Onichin? Tatsumi yelled out what Boruto used to say in high pitch. Nah, I grown out of it and plus using honorifics is a pain in the ass, Boruto replied. So who is he then? Tatsumi questioned as he looked at the unconscious Issei lying on the couch. He is from my class and targeted by the fallen angels because of his sacred gear, Boruto answered back. Is that so? You know what his sacred gear Tatsumi asked. Nah, but Rias told me that Kaneko smell a scent of a dragon inside him so it's probably some dragon related sacred gear, Boruto replied. Kuroko's little sister huh, Tatsumi said to himself and began to focus on Issei a bit more and realized something, Oi Boruto! Tatsumi yelled out. What? Boruto replied as he was about to enter the kitchen to eat what Tatsumi cooked for dinner. That sacred gear of his, it isn't just any dragon sacred gear Borgonya, this sacred gear is one of the thirteen Longinus, the booster GE, before Tatsumi could finish his sentence, a deep malice voice interrupted him saying you, what the fuck, it's Diedrig, it has been like forever since I last saw him, a deep malice voice cheerfully shouted out. Shit tyrant, why are you so loud, Tatsumi complained while picking his ear. What, I'm excited. It has been like forever since the last time I saw Diedrich, Tyrant excitedly exclaimed. Bro, the last time you met him was the time when we kill his wielder, Tatsumi states. Yeah, those were some good times right Tatsumi, Tyrant said with nostalgia. Hey, crazy bastard, Tatsumi said to himself, so what are we going to do with him then? Boruto asked and sat down on the armchair next to the couch that Issei is on. 
I guess we'll just wait for your dad and see what he will do, Tatsumi replied. Okay, but do you know when he is coming back? Boruto asked. Don't know, Tatsumi replied but seconds later Tatsumi and Boruto heard the door ring. Ding dong ding dong well I guess he's here now, Tatsumi stated. Okay, I'll open now, Boruto said and walked back to the entrance and opened the front door. Standing outside was Naruto and Seraphal. Seraphal was latched onto Naruto's arm, hugging his arm close to her chest. Naruto didn't mind as he was enjoying being hugged by his wife. Mom, I didn't know you were coming, Boruto surprising exclaimed. That all right Botan, I was feeling lonely and had free time in the underworld so I went to find Naruchan, Seraphal childishly said. Mom, you always trying to find opportunity to be with dad, do you really have some free time right now to be with dad? Boruto questioned. HMPH, you're the same right Botan, because back in the underworld you will always try to ditch training and such to be with Ravel Chan. Seraphal childishly countered back and let go of Naruto's arm. What, no? Boruto shouted in denial as his cheeks with red. Stop lying Boruto, look you're blushing right now, Naruto teased. Yeah, what Naru Chan said, Seraphal exclaimed and hugged Boruto tightly to her chest hence Boruto couldn't breath. Um, Sarah Chan, Boruto is suffocating right now so can you let him go, Naruto said. Huh, oh okay, Seraphal exclaimed and quickly lets go of Boruto. Shit, thanks, dad, Boruto gratefully said. No probs kid Naruto replied and smiled. Let go in now, Seraphal cheerfully said and walked in through the front door and take of her shoes and rushed to the living room while Naruto followed suit. While Boruto was talking to his parents at the entrance, Tatsumi decided to went back to the kitchen and do some garnishing to his curry with some freshly chopped parsley leaves, after he finished with the garnishing he placed the pot of curry on the trivets at the middle of the dining table in the dining area, once the pot of curry rest on the trivets the door swing open making the room shake slightly. What the fuck Boruto? Be careful with the door you piece of Shio oh, hey lady Seraphal Tatsumi scaredly said once he turned around and see Seraphal instead of Boruto as Boruto Naruto appeared behind Seraphal. Hey, Tatsumi? Seraphal cheerfully greeted Tatsumi. Why are you here lady Seraphal? Tatsumi calmly asked. I got bored so I went to find Naru Chan, Seraphal childishly replied. Is that so, Tatsumi said. Ah, Tatsumi you are so good at cooking. It smells so nice as well. Seraphal cheerfully praised Tatsumi as she eyed the food in front of her. Thanks you Lady Seraphal, Tatsumi said, you know, I'm also good at cooking. Seraphal exclaimed, when you guys left like two weeks ago, I started to cook dinner and I gave some to Escanor and he collapsed onto the floor and rainbow stuff was coming out of his mouth because it must have tasted good, Seraphal cheerfully said. Scary, all the boys thought in the room, anyways let eat. Seraphal said and everybody sat on a chair around the table and said itadakimasu. After dinner at the entrance by Naru Chan I'll be going back now, Seraphal said. Bye Sarah Chan be safe okay, Naruto replied, okay Seraphal whispered out as her gaze meet Naruto's, she leaned forward as her lips meet Naruto's, bye, Seraphal said. Bye, Naruto replied and Seraphal made a magic crest appeared and walked though it leaving Naruto by himself, Naruto walked back inside into the living room and saw Boruto standing. So dad, the guy that you asked me to keep a close eye on is actually the red dragon emperor, Boruto said. Yeah, I know, Naruto replied, so are you going to have him join Sona then? Boruto asked. I was but I found two people that Sona may have so if he wants then he can join Rias, Naruto answered. What happens if he doesn't want to join Rias? Boruto questioned. If he doesn't want to join Rias then he could join Ravel and you too. But he doesn't then we will have to brainwash him then I guess cause I'm not going to kill him because of his sacred gear. So who are the two you mentioned Boruto asked. The first one is a human wielding of one of Vritra's sacred gear and the second one is a human mutant with a special ability that even surpass mine that's under the same category. Gulp what is it? Boruto asked thanks for watching.